Okay, guys, welcome back to our English classes. Well, we we'll continue talking about jobs. And today, I'd like you to take a quick look into the future. Let's take a look. So, what kind of professions will disappear in the next 10 or 15 years? And uh, which ones will become more popular and actually more common? Now, you can see this table and it is all blank now. So, I'd like you to fill in this table right now with your ideas. And in the first column, you should have dying professions. It means that those professions that can disappear, that we won't need them in the nearest future even. And the second column are the jobs that will become more popular and more common in 10 or 15 years. So take time, a minute or so, and write please your predictions. Then we'll have a listening, we'll listen to a lecture, and then you'll have maybe some other ideas and maybe you will change your opinion. Okay, so I give you a minute to think about the dying professions and top future jobs and fill in the table. Okay, so I hope that you have your ideas. Personally, I think that um, dying professions are those that uh, need kind of a delivery or maybe some robots will replace us on the farms. So and I think that uh, probably we won't need drivers in the future because uh, while traveling to Europe, I saw even big ships on the rivers or even in the ocean without any people on them. And they were kind of driven by people sitting in the offices and using those joysticks we use for video games. And for the top future jobs, I think that we will still need doctors and we'll still need, I hope so, teachers. And I still hope that we will need those people who care about us, like beauticians and maybe kind of hairdressers and so on. Okay, so let's listen and... Okay, so you're going to hear a lecture about the future of the labor market. Labor market is the market of all the jobs we have. So think of all the jobs and they are on the labor market. Labor means work, means job. Then you have to circle the answers which are correct according to the recording, not according to what you know, but according to the lecture. And take a look, here both answers are possible to be correct. So maybe it will be just A or B, or it can be both. Let's take a look at the first question. So the first question, the speaker describes the transition. Transition means going from one point to the other one. So, describes the transition from an agriculture-based economy to an industrial economy. Agriculture-based, it means that the country earns the money with the help of the farmers. So, lots of farmers, lots of agriculture, growing plants, growing cattle, and that brings money to the economy of the country. And industrial economy means that the country is rich in factories, plants, and it manufactures machines. B, from industrial economy to today's information economy. 
Well, industrial economy, that's about the plants and factories and machines. And information economy means the economy where the mass product is information, is when we sell and we buy mostly information. Okay, the second question. Technology has caused people to become redundant. To become redundant means to lose jobs, to be fired, to have no jobs. To, so, to cause people to become redundant means make people leave from their jobs. And but where? In industry or in office works or office jobs. Okay. Number three, fashion designers, actors, and inventors. Inventor. Inventor is a person who invents, who comes up with new ideas. And uh, they can be scientists or they can be entrepreneurs who come up with new ideas and they invent something we really need for our life. So, and fashion designers, actors, and inventors have a creative element to their work, maybe, and can also be replaced by machines. Well, can these jobs be replaced by machines? You have to listen and answer according to the listening, but not to your background, okay? Number four, hairdressers are mentioned as an example of a creative job or a job requiring interpersonal skills. Do you remember the lesson when we were talking about soft skills? The skills you need to communicate with other people. So they are also called interpersonal skills. Okay, and the last question. In the future, it may be necessary to adapt to changing circumstances, just to be flexible and to learn new jobs several times during life. Maybe, according to the lecture again, maybe you will have to change your jobs several times alive. It's very uncommon for our parents and for our grandparents because they are used to work in one position and one job having one career throughout their whole life. But in our rapidly changing world, we need to adjust really fast and we need to be flexible. Maybe, again, according to the lecture, according to the listening, you will have to mark both answers or just one, okay? Well, guys, I hope that all the questions are clear and you are ready for the listening. Okay, listen to it very carefully. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I'm here today to help you make the right decisions about your future careers. The labour market is always changing. Your great-grandparents may have worked in agriculture in the days before mechanised farming cleared them from the land. Your grandparents probably worked in industry coal mines, shipyards, steel mills and factories with thousands of manual workers running assembly lines and actually making things. Your parents are more likely to be employed in air-conditioned offices with faxes and computers and flat screens, creating spreadsheets, sending emails and taking part in video conferences. In this, the computer age, the factories are as deserted as the fields in the country. Robots and machines control the assembly lines and the army of blue-collar workers has been replaced by a handful of white-coated technicians pushing buttons and checking monitors. But today's information economy is not immune to change. Machines are replacing white-collar workers, much as tractors replaced farmers and robots replaced factory workers. 
How many bank cashiers have lost their jobs to automatic telling machines? When's the last time you got straight through to a human telephone operator? How long will travel agents survive in the high street now that the internet has made it so easy to book online? Accountants, secretaries, personnel managers, customer service advisors, all sorts of administrative staff are being replaced by machines. And this is only the start. The computers that we need today may not need us tomorrow. So, in a world where employers use technology to increase efficiency and cut costs, what are your career prospects? Which jobs are safe bets? Well, the good news is that software programs and machines can't do every job. For example, jobs which require great creativity writers, fashion designers, musicians, actors, inventors, games designers, and people working in marketing or research and development. It's true that not everyone has the skill or ingenuity to work in those fields. But that doesn't mean you're condemned to unemployment if you're not blessed with a creative temperament. In the future, there will be jobs for you. Jobs which require emotional skills, where people work at being people. The information economy of today is going to make way for the care economy of tomorrow. Machines don't care. Machines can't care. So they can't replace people in professions where care is what counts. In the health service, for example, doctors and nurses will always find work because they possess the interpersonal skills needed in the care economy. They have to listen. They have to make their patients feel good. They have to care. They have to be human. Or jobs in personal services. Hairdressers, for example. Hairdressers don't just cut hair. They also listen to their clients, offer advice and discuss the latest news and gossip over a nice cup of tea. I can't imagine having a machine cut my hair. Can you? And there are many more professions. Teachers, beauty therapists, dentists, psychologists, gardeners fitness coaches, etc., whose skills are beyond the ability of machines and which offer rewarding careers. In the future, flexibility will be vital and lifelong learning a reality. You may need to retrain for new jobs throughout your working life. So don't throw out your pencil sharpness just yet. So, OK, guys, you listened uh, to it for the first time now. Be ready with the answers and listen again. <clears throat> Thank you. <clears throat> um, I'm here today to help you make the right decisions about your future careers. The labour market is always changing. Your great-grandparents may have worked in agriculture in the days before mechanised farming cleared them from the land. Your grandparents probably worked in industry. Coal mines, shipyards, steel mills and factories with thousands of manual workers running assembly lines and actually making things. Your parents are more likely to be employed in air-conditioned offices with faxes and computers and flat screens creating spreadsheets, sending emails, and taking part in video conferences. In this, the computer age, the factories are as deserted as the fields in the country. Robots and machines control the assembly lines, and the army of blue-collar workers has been replaced by a handful of white-coated technicians pushing buttons and checking monitors. But today's information economy is not immune to change. Machines are replacing white-collar workers, much as tractors replaced farmers and robots replaced factory workers. 
How many bank cashiers have lost their jobs to automatic telling machines? When's the last time you got straight through to a human telephone operator? How long will travel agents survive in the high street now that the internet has made it so easy to book online? Accountants, secretaries, personnel managers, customer service advisors, all sorts of administrative staff are being replaced by machines. And this is only the start. The computers that we need today may not need us tomorrow. So, in a world where employers use technology to increase efficiency and cut costs, what are your career prospects? Which jobs are safe bets? Well, the good news is that software programs and machines can't do every job. For example, jobs which require great creativity writers, fashion designers, musicians, actors, inventors, games designers, and people working in marketing or research and development. It's true that not everyone has the skill or ingenuity to work in those fields. But that doesn't mean you're condemned to unemployment if you're not blessed with a creative temperament. In the future, there will be jobs for you. Jobs which require emotional skills, where people work at being people. The information economy of today is going to make way for the care economy of tomorrow. Machines don't care. Machines can't care. So they can't replace people in professions where care is what counts. In the health service, for example, doctors and nurses will always find work because they possess the interpersonal skills needed in the care economy. They have to listen. They have to make their patients feel good. They have to care. They have to be human. Or jobs in personal services. Hairdressers, for example. Hairdressers don't just cut hair. They also listen to their clients, offer advice and discuss the latest news and gossip over a nice cup of tea. I can't imagine having a machine cut my hair. Can you? And there are many more professions. Teachers, beauty therapists, dentists, psychologists, gardeners fitness coaches, etc., whose skills are beyond the ability of machines and which offer rewarding careers. In the future, flexibility will be vital and lifelong learning a reality. You may need to retrain for new jobs throughout your working life. So don't throw out your pencil sharpeners just yet. Okay, guys. So you listened to the lecture I hope that you enjoyed it and actually this lecture tells us a lot and it explains the picture of the world we have today. Well, so what do you think about the first question? So the speaker describes the transition only from one economy to the other or from all the economies we used to have up to the present day. Right. Both answers are correct, A and B. The speaker talks about the agriculture-based economy and then its transition to the industrial economy and then from industrial economy to the information economy. Moreover, they talk about the newest economy, the economy where people care. And the second question, Technology has caused people to become redundant where? And again, both answers are correct. Machines replaced people on plants and factories and even farms. And again, machines replaced people in office work. Because these tiny things, the smartphones, which are even tinier, replaced such jobs as, for example, assistants, because we've got the a digital assistant, Siri or Alexa or somebody else. And, well, not actually somebody else. 
You see, it's artificial intelligence and we give it human features. Well, I called Alexa her and actually, well, maybe it's true now. Then comes fashion designers, actors and inventors. And what is true about them? The true thing is that they have a creative element to their work. And because they have a creative element to their work, so far they cannot be replaced by machines. But nobody knows what can happen with the development of the artificial intelligence. Then we come to the care economy, where people care about each other. And hairdressers are mentioned as the example of the correct answer is a job requiring interpersonal skills. Well, when you come to the hairdresser or when you come to a beautician to get your nails done, you don't sit quietly. You start chatting, you talk, and sometimes people come with their problems or with their happy things and they want to discuss it with their beautician or hairdresser. And these people need to have very strong interpersonal skills. They need to listen, they need to care, okay? And the last question, in the future, it may be necessary to adapt to changing circumstances or learn new jobs several times during your life. Both answers are correct. You need to adapt, you need to be flexible, and maybe you will have to change your career or job. Okay, guys, that was a pretty interesting lecture and personally, I like it very much because it gives me a clear vision of the present world. Okay, let's move on. So, here is the list that I made after the listening. So, in my opinion, uh, bank tellers, bookkeepers, typists, cashiers, payroll clerks, secretaries, door-to-door -door salespeople and factory workers are among dying professions. Because these jobs do not require interpersonal skills, they are not creative and they can be easily substituted by machines. Okay, and top future jobs. Well, software engineers. Yes, that's a burning issue because we all use different apps and those apps should be written by those engineers and database administrators. Data means information. Information is growing in numbers and we need those people who will handle it and who will work with it. Then comes healthcare jobs. Well, I shouldn't even comment on that. With this pandemic, healthcare jobs are top jobs, just number one in the whole world. Then they are nurses, personal care aides, and so on. Service technicians, we are really dependent on machines now, and we need those people who can take care of machines, who know how to repair them and how to make them work faster and better. Information security analyst writes, we place all our information into the internet. We need to make it safe. Well, this is my list. Maybe your list is pretty much the same, or it can be different, but still, mind please, that now we are transiting into the care economy from the information economy. Okay, guys, I hope that you enjoyed this listening and you're ready for some exercises. Well, this time we won't have grammar exercises, we'll have vocabulary exercises and kind of grammar. So it's called use of English. It's when you have to use the language. Okay, take a look at the first one you have to choose the correct answers. Let's read the sentences and choose the correct answer. So, the first one. Teaching is a job that or who requires a lot of patience. Well, I'm talking here not about a 
person. I'm talking about a thing, teaching. So then I have to choose that. Once again, the whole sentence, teaching is a job that requires a lot of patience. Okay, the second sentence. My job is fine except for the holidays, which or that are too short. It seems that both words are possible, but here you've got a comma. And if you have comma in such a clause, then you can't use that. That is used in clauses without commas, okay? So once again, the whole sentence, my job is fine except for the holidays, which are too short. Number three, the woman, which or who, interviewed me for the job seemed to like my answers. When we talk about people, we need to use pronoun who, and it should be like this, the woman, who interviewed me for the job seemed to like my answers. Okay, the next one. Denmark and Norway are among the countries which or where ordinary workers earn high salaries. Well, Denmark and Norway are the countries. And when we think about the areas, we think of the where. And the correct answer would be Denmark and Norway are among the countries where ordinary workers earn high salaries. The next one, number five. The person, nothing or which I sent my CV to is on leave at present. Well, I can't use which with people. That means that here, I need nothing. So, and the whole sentence will be like this. The person I sent my CV is on the leave at present. Okay, the next one. Nick was fired without being given a clear reason which or what upset him very much. What is a question word? And uh, it's not the reported speech and we can't use it in the middle, just like which or something like that. So the correct answer is which. Nick was fired without being given a clear reason which upset him very much. And the last sentence. It's important to do something what or nothing you like in life. Again, you can't use what in the beginning, if it is not a reported speech, if it is not an indirect question. So you have to use nothing here. It's important to do something you like in life. Actually, that's my advice to you. It's really important to do something you like in life. Okay, let's move on. Now, you've got the departments and you have to say their responsibilities. Let's look through the departments. You will go there, accounts, marketing, personnel or human resources, maybe you have heard, HR, research and development, customer service, sales, public relations. You heard it, it's PR. Okay, and you have to match them with their responsibilities. Okay, I hope that you read the responsibilities. Now let's match. So, the first comes accounts. The responsibility of this department is that they keep the books. The second one is marketing. And in the marketing department, they plan advertising campaigns. Guys, take a look. Not companies, but campaign. A different word. Then comes personnel or human resources. And they prepare contracts for the employees. 
they work with the employees. Okay, the next one, research and development. So they design new products. These are the people who come up with new ideas. Then comes customer service. They deal with complaints from customers. We all call customer services when we've got troubles with the goods we bought or with our computers or something like that. Then comes sales. They organize the sale of the products, a very important department. They earn money for the company, actually. And the last one is public relations. And public relations are responsible for contacts with the media. So they show the picture of the company to the media and they talk with the media. Okay, guys, so these were the departments and their responsibilities. And the last one is your homework. Guys, you have to think of your future career. Will it be competitive? And I'd like you to note your ideas. You will need them in the further lessons. Well, that was a very, I hope, interesting lesson that gives you a very clear vision of today's economy and of today's picture of the world. Think of your career. Think if it is competitive or not. Stay tuned, learn English and have fun. Bye.